Thanks to St. Bridget of Sweden and her vision of the birth of Jesus, artists focus more on Christ and the adoration of the Lord, a change which persisted in later artwork. However, common expressions that had been inserted into religious art were abandoned in the Baroque period. When it comes to the Baroque, much later now in the 17th century, late 16th and 17th century, all those narrative devices now are somewhat abandoned for just drama and uh, light and dark, right? And this is largely due to the influence of uh, somebody like uh, Caravaggio at the beginning of the 17th century, a painter in, in Rome who painted very dramatic paintings uh, with lights and darks. And uh, some of the northern painters, for example, Georges de La Tour and, uh, from France or Philippe de Champagne from France, you know, they, they love this drama, the light again, you know. And, and also the, the, the Lenin brothers, they're these three brothers that uh, all painted, they would incorporate what you might call a kind of uh, uh, a genre atmosphere, that is bringing in their peasants, very ordinary people. Like for example, the Lenin brothers, as far as I know, they're among the first to show people praying in front of Jesus with 30 feet. You know, 30 feet, and you can see that the, the underneath of the 30 feet, you know. And again, with dramatic lights and darks, and, but a lot of the details are taken away. You see animals coming in there more closely, all kinds of animals, but the symbolism now disappears. That was more proper to the Renaissance and to the Middle Ages, right? In this period, there was great division between Catholics and Protestants, known as the Reformation and later the Counter-Reformation. And religious art took a hit. Catholic paintings, altarpieces, sculptures were under attack and often destroyed. Once the Reformation died down, the Catholic Church insisted religious art had to focus less on materialistic or decorative elements. In order to replenish the religious art lost in churches during the Reformation, artists like Peter Paul Rubens, a Flemish artist, were commissioned. When you look at um, paintings such as uh, Rubens, you know, who was one of the great painters of the period. He was a diplomat. Uh, he did all kinds of history paintings. He did all kinds of, you know, religious paintings. And he shows here, again, in a vertical Baroque style, you know, very movemented, diagonal. Uh, the, the angels practically look like they're made of flesh and blood. I mean, they look like they're going to, you know, fall onto the actual nativity itself, right? And, uh, and so, again, that's the kind of drama that was proper to the um, um, counter-reformation period that was trying to bring uh, piety back, not so much in a narrative and explanatory style, but in a, in a style that would bring the emotions of uh, Christians back to really pray and to really picture Our Lady there, right there in front of them, as though she was really there in St. Joseph and everybody was there, right? Art during and after the Counter-Reformation aimed at creating more intimacy between the observer and the characters in the painting, as though one were just walking into the scene. Details and features are clear, appear closer, and are more realistic. <laughs>